has to have been banned out, so Laud will not get that, and that also takes away that engage a little bit. We were talking that we saw so much from Renegades. We're gonna see some power picks here. Whatever ends up being left up, whether it's Lulu, Rise, Poppy, Graves, Jungle. Seeing more Poppy, that's for sure. I love Poppy. It, the play is fantastic to see. All right. Especially when it can be done well. Rise gets taken out. Mundo, there's a little bit of the late game. Who is after Gangplank? His 100% pick ban trophy belt that he wears. That's actually 100% ban. It is just these 100% are, These ban. are the only bans. <laughs> it's funny, Freak, Freak earlier was like, yeah, he's pretty much, you know, I don't think we've seen one yet. He's like, yeah, he's 100% ban. <laughs> Nobody gets to be able to play Gangplank. He's always in that slot. Just so it's basically just like the lore. We, they took him back out. <laughs> yeah, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> Gangplank's gone. Pop, pop. The players are disabling him. Don't get mad at us. Poppy is now going to be taken out. We just mentioned her really oh. putting a mark on the game lately. And Billy Boss, he'll be looking to lock in the Kench. Bring him off the bench here for Team Dignitas to start off picks and bans, and he will do so. Tom Kench, the anti-playmaker here. This stops a lot of different strategies. The pick strategy that you might want to run if you're Renegades mm -hmm. now is pretty much put off to the wayside. You have to come up with something else, maybe some team fight. But then again, Tom Kench is still a great flex pick. Yep. Top support, right? Either of them work. A lot of people have been playing at top. It could really be Billy Bosses because we have not I'll seen the Kench yeah. go in. Kiwi could probably play that anyways, but could be locked in for Billy, as you said. Flex pick, Thresh. I love it. I want to see some Thresh play, especially Remy's. Love yeah. that in the promotion tournament as well as Graves getting locked in. We've also seen him get a fair share of bans. Yes, he was not very popular last week in the North American LCS, and it was quite curious because Jungle Graves and now Top Graves are very popular in other regions, and it's being played pretty much every chance that people can get. I know the LCK yeah. is not on top of it just yet because it, when you play it in the jungle, you don't have the same type of gank pressure, really. Yep. It's a burst farm jungler, but also here, it's a flex pick because if you throw it to the top lane and it's against the Tom Kench, Graves top beats Tom Kench top. Yep. You're constantly shoving him into his turret with your early wave clear, and when you get somebody under their turret as Graves, you just throw out cues against the wall, you throw them against the turrets, you have lots of targets to get burst off. So early aggression there. And to touch on your last point about the uh, Thresh for Remy, she was once called Mad Wife. Mad Wife. There you go. Lock it in. And it wasn't the promotion tournament. It was just their promotion game out of challenges. I wanted to correct myself. Yeah. Oh, you waited so long for that. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I actually just thought about it when, when we went back to talk about uh, Remy's Thresh. So looking at what the bands are now, or the picks are, Corky and Rek'Sai being locked in. So we see the double AD carry composition. Where's some tank going to come in for this Renegades composition? Well, it could still be the top lane. Honestly, this could be a Graves, Jungle, Corky mid, and then you could have a third AD carry here. But I do think- No! I, I know. <laughs> Whoa. Uh. What has happened to this meta? <laughs> but Lot does play a mean Corky, and I wouldn't put it past him to lock mm -hmm. that in and play it there. But it is actually going to be a Graves top most likely, it can still be an AD carry, right? Because that's going to be a Rek'Sai jungle pretty much 100%. So that's locked in. All right, Apollo, Kiwi. You are the middlemen for the picks now. What will you choose for your team or yourself? As we see the Alistar coming in, it will mean that Tom Kench is going to be in the top lane. Locked in. Shifter gets his Ari. Really putting a stamp on that lap champion. Last time he played it, showed a lot better in mid versus GBM. We're also going to see that Tom Kench top as Kiwi Kid takes the alley. Tom Kench top against Graves. Talked about the matchup before. Graves has an edge early. And can really get up to those item points where he's no longer just a kind of a damage eight burst eighty carry. He becomes extraordinarily tanky as well. Now the Alistar for Kiwi Kid, it's pretty much a classic pick for him. You're going back to how Remy has performed in promotion and challenger series. Yeah. Well, in relegations, Kiwi Kid kept Dignitas in with a five-man pulverize in game five. So he's going back to a pick here that he knows how to engage on and that he can make those plays. That pixel brush near Baron, a member of the pulverize, very clearly. Hopefully he can replicate that same play. We see teams locked in on both sides. Nice lock-in plus poke potential coming in, coming in here from Renegades. They can kind of make some moves if they want to, if Remy can get those thresh hooks in. But it doesn't look like they have too many options other than yeah, and this is a little bit of a different look here for the Renegade squad because it's poke. You have wave clear with the Victor and the Corky and also Graves. Graves has a great amount of wave clear with the end of the line queue. 
but this is a, a composition that's squishy. You're not going to really be jumping all in a whole bunch. Yep. So you're looking for picks here, but then there's the Tom Kench. If anybody gets thresh hooked, they're going to get eaten by Billy Boss's Tom Kench, and it's going to be very frustrating. So they have to poke, they have to play this game slow, and they're looking for a little bit of a stall out, stall out here on the Renegade squad. Get eaten by Tom Kench. That's not frustrating. I'm just lying. That's very frustrating. We'll see. What Zyrene says, if it comes true, the team comps are set. So head over to Twitter and weigh in on this match. Hashtag DIG win or hashtag R-E-N win. Lock in your vote and we will show you later how you are affecting the game. The players, or rather the viewers in-house have been loud and proud all day. Happy to see more games. This will be our final one on the day here. Dignitas versus Renegades. Coming to you live here from the LCS studio. We are about to be on the rift and we'll see who leaves this game two and one as both teams are tied up. And you definitely want to start jockeying for that position. You were saying, you know, the season's pretty much over, the split's pretty much over before you know it. And right. in summer, you need to start getting as many wins as you can against the teams that people project to be around you in the standings because those tiebreakers start to add up very yeah. quickly. So if Renegades and Dignitas are fighting for those fifth, sixth, seventh spots, well, you don't want to have to drop down and not have a chance at Worlds. Right. But also, you want to keep your career. Also, it, it'll show that these teams, when they play under pressure, if they're failing in these games, it's going to be even more pressure Boom. once you actually get down to the wire. Nice end of the line off the wall. Billy Boss takes a chunk of damage there, and you can just see that's like how level one Graves' damage is. Uh, yes. Got to stay away from it. It's pretty much banned out for a Do reason. Do not touch. Hot fire. Yeah. If the end of the line makes contact with a wall, it immediately explodes. And the idea is that it's supposed to be a small amount of damage when it first comes out, and then you have two seconds to react. But there is that caveat of if it's against a wall, boom, you take it instantly. So stay away from it. Pretty much treat it like a poppy. Don't be near a wall. Don't have a wall <laughs> on the other side of you. Award wars and support wars back and forth. See what Keystone Masteries, everybody's running in just a few here. So Shifter playing up against who he in that mid lane on the Ari. I was mistaken. It was not GBM, but he's still definitely increasing and in getting back to that point where Shifter can be the guy to get a, a triple kill or a double kill in a fight that doesn't look like it's going Dignitas' way. Yeah, Shifter had a really good week last week. He went 8, 2, and 7 on Anivia, and then he went 6, 1, and 10 on Ari. So overall, he ended up with a 14, 3, and 17 performance last week. An amazing KDA for Shifter, and he was the person yeah. that people were saying wasn't being aggressive enough in lane. Right. And now he's playing Ari. Now he's playing these champions that allow him to be very active. The walk-up flay harass. Lod also putting a few shots in, and Renegades already has this lane won by HP if they keep that aggression up. It's just here and there's. We'll see if they make a move at two. Yeah, the thing is, is that this lane with Alistar now, you have to watch the level two, you have to give it up. And even if Dignitas hit level two first, there's no headbutt pulverize combo because heal is taken at level one here. So there wasn't really a huge amount of threat that Dignitas was going to get out of this skill order. Right. Just allowing it to push the turret, making it safe for them. Good relics off by Kiwi Kid. He'll put a few tags in here so Apollo can do the damage necessary. Mid lane 11 to 11, all tied up. A lot of focus on the CS. Nothing has been done well CSing here. No trades of damage just yet. Jungler path. It looks like it's going to be Scuttle for Crumbs. Very healthy here. He could dip into the mid lane. And it looks like he's actually just going to go around and try to Whoa. ward up here. Get that vision. Ooh, just nope, out of not range. Quite. Not quite, but he is looking like he wants to go gank mid lane. Shifter, though, it is good to put pressure on him. Alex each and Crumbs, they had a lot of synergy and challenger, and this is how they got their advantages. Oh! Charm to laser. Can he get the party tent down? Key Ray is going to be top side. And Shifter knew that, so he was kind of hovering. But good try by Crumbs. Good pressure. Yeah. Just chunking out a mid laner is worth it a lot of the times for a jungler. Mm -hmm. You'll see Nidalee's just run by, throw a flyby spear. If you if it lands, then you're in a good spot. But actually, <laughs> Key Ray is actually going to take a long way around top here. And because Graves shoves in on Tom Kench, you do have to be conscientious of when the jungler could be your way. He actually backs up and sacrifices a little bit of his wave just to play it safe. Mm -hmm. Which you can't, the thing is you can't play safe forever when you push the wave up like that. And now Kiri is going to actually come around and look for this gank opportunity. Oh, that ward was placed <laughs> just recently, but it's going to be enough time. Quick draw is there. He uses it. Cocoon's going to be just in out of range of the turret. Now he walks in for the spiders. Billy Boss actually couldn't make the range, but he does get forward. Throws the flash on. Grey Health will be there. First blood for Team Dignitas. 
Crumbs on the other side of the map just cleaning up his jungle, so wasn't called to the top lane there to help out RF. And that's the problem, is when you have this Graves, you're constantly going to be shoving. That's how you beat this yeah. Tom Kench in the matchup, but Kirei taking advantage of that because it's a losing matchup naturally. That's actually pretty cool that he decided to go up there knowing he was going to be in that state. Be a little bit different from the Tracer play we saw on Jin Air Graves. That eight minute turret taken down in the top lane. <laughs> We'll see if he can still do the damage and serve his purpose, because that's still what he wants to do. He's going to get back to that lane and still be able to keep doing the same thing. Yeah, he's going to continue to do that, but now he doesn't have a flash, and now he doesn't have a TP on that great the top lane. So it becomes even riskier. He has to get wards. You see the pink ward in his inventory. If he can place it down on the bush behind him, he's going to be able to clear out a ward. He's going to be able to be a little bit safer, but you should have your jungler play towards this side of the map. So pretty well off at the turret, though. We do see 33 to 19 CS for RF Legendary. Even though he went down, he will have to play safer, so that may be evened out here as Billy Boss puts on some pressure. CS around the map, generally in favor of Renegade so far, but that first play for Team Dignitas here. Let's see if Key Ray can get any more moves made. Blue buff over to Alex. Very difficult to make anything happen in the mid lane, but we'll see if he can do anything. This is the guy that was getting people or getting challenger teams in, <laughs> right? And uh, then he brings himself in on one. We'll see if he can make the moves. He's been trying to do it for a long time. A long time waiting for him to get a, a victory in the championship. Yeah, Alex has a history of beating teams near the bottom of the LCS, whether he's on a sub squad or not. Yep. He's used to adapting to having new members too, so. Having Lod here, and as they transition to team fights, it may not be that different for him. It actually seems to be pretty plug and play right now during the laning phase. It's not an, as an aggressive of a bot lane because Freeze has very aggressive tendencies, but just feeling out this matchup with the Corky yep. Thresh and how Lod and Remy are going to continue to play it. You well, have to kind of figure out what your style is midway. That's Charm. The trade actually was not that good coming from Alex. He missed his laser. Shifter feels good to go in. Kirei just oh. the side. And he gets the bite in. Kills down Alex each and gets the flash. Kirei is in the right places at the right time right now. He really is. Setting these up and he is knowing and he's communicating with his laners. Hey, this is when I'm coming in. And the thing that gets me on this, Cyrene, is they noticed the, the pressure on RF Legendary. So they warded two pinks for him. Kirei's taken one out right now. So the top side of the map and somewhat mid was warded. And that still happens. Kirei comes right down the channel of that pink ward and takes down Alex. Yeah, rather late flash from Alex. He ate the charm at the start, so mm -hmm. if he flashed, he knew that the distance would only be closed by Ari, and there would be no follow-up CC. So holding that for too long, Kirei comes out on top and now has two kills. And Kirei had a mixed performance last week. Absolutely. There's one game where he's running through gravity fields and he's basically losing his team the game. And then the other one, he's affecting every lane, but speaking of affecting lanes... Playback, summoners are up on both Rose. sides. Nothing's been used. Crumbs is hovering. Remy goes in, hides in the brush, tries to deny vision. Now to the other brush. They're going to get a kill here. No, not on the Kiwi Kid. TP comes in and deters the fight. And Billy Boss does not go any harder, but this now leaves RF in the top lane by himself. Exactly. Stall this back. Billy Boss is backing in a bad place. Make sure that you're able to stall it. Oh you get more CS on this top lane. 64 to 40 right now, and he gets turret damage. Crumbs is trying to do a lot of work for the team right now. He is back and forth, trying to get kills, trying to make plays happen, just altered towards mid, and Dignitas is almost one step ahead on each time. Kirei is having a rather good game here in terms of where his pressure is, but you see, he's gonna get pressured by Crumbs here. Once again. Crumbs in the back. Crumbs trying to make moves. He got it. He does, he did. Couldn't tell for a second when he was on his, uh, his turret, or his tunnel there. Goes over. They're really in the face of Key right now. They want to shut him down. 2-0. It would be nice. Shut down gold as well. But now to the bottom lane, a 3v3. Now a 4v4 as both Victor and Ari start to pull down. Looks like Shifter is going to use this time to push mid lane, which has to mean they're calling for Dig to be very safe here in the bot. Yeah, Shifter is going to go back to clearing it. And that's going to bring Alex and Crumbs both yep. up. But they saw at least down bottom, so Shifter pushes too far forward. He's going to get ganked by Crumbs. So he has to actually back up after a bit. Or go for a roll. There he goes. So it looks like Legendary, or RF rather, has gone for that serrated Dirk. Yep, looking for the Yomu's Ghost Blade yeah. first buy on Graves. The armor penetration is extraordinarily good with the end of the line and the collateral damage. 
build actually gets really smooth after that. You get the Yomu Ghost Blade, and then you can build into tank very quickly. And it's a mixture of tank. You go for the Maw of Malmortis, and then you also get a Sterics Gauge. Ah. So you have multiple shields. You have shields on shields. Crumbs, Crumbs looking for the bot lane once again. Kind of factoring this into time, there would still have really been wards down there placed by Dignitas in that last little fight they had. Kiwi Key grabbed out, he's level six. Kiwi's all right on that one, but he has to pop the ultimate, so that could mean Renegades can keep going a little bit harder each time. Exactly. Kiwi Kid is low, though, out of mana. He has to back right now, and nobody really has enough to actually clear here. Ooh. It landed, but not quite the target that they want. In the okay. top lane, though, this is this is also the other part of this pressure that's happening here in the bottom lane, is that they've started to force a play by Renegades because Legendary in the top lane, he has TP advantage. And he's always going to push Billy in. So you have to be conscious of where right. he's going to come from, where's the ward, because if they were able to get behind the tier one turret, they're actually able to make this type of outnumbered play that Renegades wants to have. And Renegades, despite being down two kills, and even in turrets, they're actually up in gold because of these CS leads we're seeing in both bot and top. Yep, just edging it out. So I don't know if Crumbs, we'll see, keep an eye on him as well. He's got good tunnels around, and he's been trying to make plays left and right for the team. Dignitas shutting it down low. Key Ray did not go down. He's still gold to be waiting to be picked up here by Renegades. Dignitas looking at their team comp. What are we looking for them towards late game? Because that's actually when we see the intensity kind of the pressure of a game start to take hold over their strats and kind of take them apart. Okay, so in contrast to what Renegades want to do, Renegades want to group up. They want to be able to siege and poke and mm -hmm. wave clear. If you look at Dignitas' squad, though, they actually want to stop the engage of Remy, which is pretty much the only engage on this squad, using Billy Boss, and they want to have some team fight slash skirmishes where it's two on twos, three on threes in the middle of a fight. Because Elise is fantastic, a lot of single target pick with the cocoon alongside Shifter's RE charm. So these are champions that really want to be able to section people off and not have yep. an all out 5v5 team fight because that'll favor Victor a little bit. But you want to have two on twos, threes on threes. Just got vision of Brums going towards the top. Multiple pressures on this Alex each lane. Back and forth, Kirei does not stop making uh, a few visits here. Looks like Alex will be fine for now. 105 to 108, safe in that lane, and it's slowed down. But what I'm expecting is once these lanes break, the triple AD composition, I feel like we're going to get some pretty volatile fights here yeah. once they break out. Because either the AD carriers are going to die immediately, or they're going to delete their one on one opponent. Yeah, that's how it works, is you don't really have too much of a front line in these compositions. Tom Kench is pretty much the tankiest member here alongside the Alistar. But with Renegades, they've pretty much thrown tankiness out the window. Mm -hmm. So these pe they have members of Renegades have to position appropriately. They cannot get hit by a charm. They cannot get hit by a cocoon. And there you go, Riff. It's not eight minutes. It's 12 minutes and 40 seconds. But the top lane turret goes dead. <laughs> oh, just gets out. But Crumbs is getting a little bit of knowledge with what he's doing. Has to blow his flash, and Dignitas is not really giving up an inch here. The whole team is moving as a collective unit every time something happens. Shifter coming down to help a team if necessary. And then they call to push the, the mid lane on that last bottom tier engage we thought Renegades was going to hit. So Dignitas is doing a very nice dancing game around what Renegades has been trying to put on the table. Yeah, Dignitas, especially Kirei, have been doing a good job of beating them at the kind of Heading him off at the pass if it's right. an old western, That's right? That's the way to put it. So Kirei is showing up top because the turret's about to go down, and he knows that this is a prime place for Crumbs to show up. It's kind of that if I were him, I would gank this lane right now. So I'm going to go there and try to stop it. Just keep his lane safe and counter gank. Looking at what the next move may be here. That was very fast by Renegades to pick up a chunk of gold. Bottom turret, top turret. They're still going to send Lon and Remy back here down to the bot lane, so mid's not really getting the pressure towards Shifter just yet. Maybe for setting up onto Dragon here and seeing if they can double up on the objective and the turret. You have to watch out for these power spikes, though, on Renegade's side. If you're going to be grouping up and trying to push down turrets, Renegades are going to be looking to all group mid, because it's that mm -hmm. last one standing. And they do have the Yomu's Ghost Blade, which is so gold effective. Oh, no! Second, Remy, oh, the pick! 
That's gonna be a Womp Womp situation for Renegades. They try to go in a little too deep. Like you were saying, that mid lane is there. They're spreading themselves very thin in a 1-1-2. One, one, the three now as Crumbs kind of hovers down here, but did not need to push the second tier turret. Yeah, you have to watch for those picks when you go into these places that don't have vision. And Remy's not level nine, right? You don't have the upgraded sweeper. And Lod, he hasn't changed out his trinket yet for a blue trinket. So he's not able to scout these out. He's not able to scout out these blank positions that they don't have yeah. vision of. Well, maybe a play to come. Crumbs never leaving something without, or never leaving a situation without something as he puts a lot of deep wards down after losing Remy there. And they may be able to make a play off it soon. Dragon's up. This is also, this is also what it may mean. 15 minutes on the clock. It looks like Kiwi Kid is in and out, but I don't know if they have the resources to do anything else. They just look, taking pictures. First dragon for themselves here. After you take that bottom turret, it's rather easy to put pressure on the dragon. Pick it up for yourself. I'm surprised they haven't rotated mid yet, but Kirei, yeah. Ping that he's coming top a long time ago. An RF. Now, now you push bottom or pressure bottom if you're the Renegade side and you try to at, le at least get something back, but it looks like it's not going to happen. Shifter also painted towards the top lane. Mm -hmm. They might be able to pick up these outer turrets really without finding any other pressure on the map. Yeah, the dragon went down and that's going to be all right for a bit of damage percentage, but I feel like mid would be going down here so they can get more wards and open up the way they try to want to work their team. Shifter has to watch himself. He has two people extra people in his lane. Would it almost be the possibility that they're kind of saying, Dignitas, we want you to group more, because if they do get one good fight, they get more than one turret? It's true. Yeah, if they group more and then they end up getting a good fight off of them, they can take a lot more with right. those death timers. Mm -hmm. But right now, that was really a, tr a trade for pretty much nothing. I'd call it a trade, but it was kind of a steal yeah. in that top lane, because they're not getting much in, much in return. They're going to be able to get some damage here. We have to watch out for the wave player. Might be able to take it though. Yeah, those 380 carries right. finally in the same spot. But wait, they really want to go on this. Kirei goes in very far. Kiwi Kid's trying to go in, but he can't get past the box quick enough for a headbutt pulverize. Nobody's gone down just yet. But a whole heck of a lot of summoner spells coming out from uh, Renegade side there to get themselves disengaged. And the turret does finally fall down. And you see Renegade's playing that correctly. RF doesn't even use his Yomu's Ghost Blade in that because it wasn't something they wanted to actually fight. They just wanted to disengage it. Box comes down, flash away. Make sure that you aren't continuing this fight against a composition that has so much CC. And you are just these very squishy AD carries running around. So you have to play this position correctly. And Renegade's just wanted to disengage and get a turret. Also got both junglers, no tracker knives there. Sight stones for each of them, instead of those trackers we've usually been seeing. Oh, Billy, Billy. Our observer's calling you out, oh man. I didn't see that the first time. I don't know who else didn't see that the first time, but I didn't see that the I wouldn't, first time. I would have been none the wiser. Too bad, good, good thing Kobe's not on this cast. <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes. That's going to be the Rift Herald. And it is picked up by Lod. Oh, man. So a lot of teams are actually getting in the habit of taking Rift Herald because they're figuring out, OK, let's at least get, let's at least figure out how it feels and when we should be able to take it. So if it ever gets buffed, we'll know how to take it. And I actually think it's not a bad strategy at all. No, people are, are thinking about I'm this sorry, I was I was that we need still to reminiscing. I apologize. Oh, about the, the TP? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I could I had to... Okay. It's all good. It's all no, good. you're right. But yeah, Rift Herald buff comes through, and it looks like it's just going to be split push on the opposite sides of the map here with one defender. I mean, 4v1s, 3v1s. Oh. They get one instance that favors them, and you see how fast Renegades can take these turrets. Renegades are faster. They're yeah. gonna trade the tier two here, possibly in the bot lane. We already see a back from Kirei saying that, wait, we actually need more resource for defense. That means their turret pushing gets that much slower. There now, here comes Kiwi Kid. More members are backing, and that's gonna be RF Legendary with a TP if he needs to get to the top side of this map. But great 4-1 played here by Renegades to get an inhibitor turret and only lose one of their own. Take the Rift Herald, immediately group up and push, and they used the pushing power of the Rift Herald yep. better than any other team I've seen so far. As soon as they took it, wasn't just to get into the habit. Oh, it, was it was go into yeah. those lanes and use your push advantage. And RF was just on wave clear duty on the bot side, and he's relatively safe. Graves can...
quick draw out. Graves can right. throw down a smoke screen. You even have an extra little nudge yourself backwards with the collateral damage now, so that he's rather safe in that. Mm -hmm. So and this, and it was gonna new, get the game. new love of Swifties too opens oh, up yeah. a few little doors, a little bit more speed. Yeah. It just makes it that much more comfortable. So when everybody has Swifties, is it really a speed advantage anymore? It I don't is. know. Because you can quick them. It's that whole if everybody's fast, then nobody really is. It feels better, Cyrene. <laughs> He'll outrun Apollo. That's true. He'll outrun, he'll outrun <laughs> Apollo. Fast speed. Actually, I don't know. I can kind of check the, the zeal movement speed here. Ah, <laughs> oh, he's six movement speed higher. <laughs> and that's what uh, you say. Got him. RF just a little bit quicker on the draw. It's a minute on to Dragon. Everybody's in the mid lane, as we would think. You're really looking for a bind here, or a cocoon, I should say. I don't think anybody's really going to be able to go off of it as we're still waiting for Team Dignitas to group and gather up in the mid lane. Still RF Legendary trying to work that TP being up towards the top lane, which means Billy Boss is going to have to make a very long walk. Does he actually commit to this all the way? If he's seen, this is could be a quite an easy dragon here for Renegades. Number two, not the worst thing in the world, but it may just be uncontested now. They're actually going to send Ki Ray yeah. and Kiwi Kid both up to the top side. RF is actually playing this rather well. It's very hard as a top laner to not just get, Ooh. not not just say, okay, you can have that minion wave. I'm not greedy, but to back all the way off. Because mm. there's a lot of times where you stand there as a top laner and you're like, okay, I'll take five steps backwards. When right. you really need to take 35 and go all the <laughs> way back, <laughs> keep yourself really safe. But you know better than everybody telling you things, right? <laughs> I, no, I can stay. I'm all right. I swear to God, I just saw somebody bot lane. They're bot lane. Yeah. And they all jump out of the bush. They're, they're missing. They could be anywhere. Well, they're, they're probably not here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're all here. But Dragon up. Billy Boss pushing top lane. Tom catch. Not really the premier split pusher and taking turrets. RF's going to come up there, clear this wave out. Both top laners have TP. This may be the fight here, depending on the CC and how it gets started off in this fight, Riff. So here's the long walk from Billy Boss. He's got the ultimate up, so he can go kind of crazy. He's going to be actually able to push mid here with Apollo. So this is Dig trying to go to the beat of their own drum and make Renegades now act on something. And as they do play reactively, they have to head the long way around, and they're going to lose at least half health on this turret. But Billy Boss is kind of goal side sit here. May make it the whole turret. Oh, he's he's, he's got a great health. He goes down. Remy's able to take that kill, but then she falls. And now it's going to be Apollo on the turret. It's a free fight back and forth, but that's a support for a top side. And that's losing a lot of damage in Billy Boss right now. So Dignitas is going to back off. They got a turret, opened up the map a little bit more, and can hopefully work from there. Dragon's still up. Yeah, when the CC comes out as Tom Kench is low, uh. that's where you save it for. But, you know, Gravity Field stacks up right then, and he can't do anything about it. That's actually great. When you're able to take out the person who's going to stop your playmaking and you actually kill a Tom Kench, it's pretty much handed to you. But right here, now we're going to see the CC. Oh, Kiray tries to go in immediately on the gravity field once again. Somebody goes down and big plays by Alex Eich putting those in the team turning. Good communication there from everybody as they now get dragon number two. Pretty hard fought. Dignitas is not giving up these things lightly. That's the moment in the game where you have your gray screen and you go, oh yeah, he has cleanse. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't notice. That, that, happen, that happens actually quite frequently to a lot of players. That feels like, bad, because then you, stay, you sit there and you're like, I should have looked at I that during should've. loading screen or something. But I, it was, it was I had 23 play. minutes to see it. It was a hyper-aggressive play, wanted to pick out Alex each, instant cleanse, turns it around, they pick up Key Ray, right. and now you have to think a little bit more about those windows in which you're going to try to pick Alex. And I also assume that a QSS will come out here very shortly, and Key Ray, boom. Alex has been the one in front for a while now, and then that instant turnaround, he was definitely the main target there. Oh, he didn't even get stunned. He just got locked up. Oh, Apollo wanted to come from the right side. They I wanted promise. to have this pincer attack into the choke point. But, of course, turning it around on Kirei is definitely going to stunt that. Seems like a bit of back and forth in communication for Dignitas. Or at least not everybody on this, not, not on the same page, but at the same moment. Yes, I want to engage, but let me take a few more steps forward. Not everybody has the range to get into these fights. Dignitas is losing one member at a time as Renegades has been getting away pretty clean for most of the part. It is four to two, but Renegades is more working off the ball and around the map right now as opposed to straight up the middle. Yeah, you definitely want to be able to kite back in this composition as well. So when 
Dignitas is taking steps towards you, yeah. being able to walk backwards, throw your Victor laser out, right. throw your Corky Phosphorus bombs and rockets, you're going to be in a really good spot. You're going to be able to get your damage off with pretty much no rebuttal from a low-range Lucian, and also an Ari that has to commit to actually get into the fight. Looking at those, some of those big names we mentioned in the beginning, Shifter has been having a pretty good time in yep. mid lane this season. Usually falls behind, normally a bit under his mid uh, NCS's opponents, so nothing new there, but still looking for him to get a big carry on this game. He Ray helped to get that mid lane started in the beginning. Remember the ganks on Alex each, but still Renegades has had crumbs, continuously putting down vision, finding doorways for Renegades to get to openings, and now it's put them Basically on top of map control here, you can see him running Dignitas around. Yeah. But we haven't seen a move really that put Renegades inside Dig's base. They got the top end hit, but aren't working towards it yet. No chance. Yep, they're just trying to work towards a fight here. If you can get the correct vision, RF has TP and he's up against Shifter, who's not going to push a turret very quickly with his build just yet. No Lich Bane or anything of the like. And he doesn't have TP. So if you were able to actually execute on a play in that top side, which they were trying to force, mm -hmm. you saw RF was running backwards Shifter was pinging him desperately, like, hey, this guy could actually get into the fight, and I can't. So good on Dignitas to try and disengage that, despite being a composition that wants yep. to pick you. What do they want? They're pinging wolves. Say, <laughs> let's get wolves. That'll be Tom Kench's. It's, a, it's an objective. It is. Let's see if he finishes an item, but it doesn't look like he's going to. Maybe he just has the gold, too? He's got just about 1,600. Goes back, sells the shield, picks up a Giant's Belt, and a Pink Ward. A lot of, actually, two Giant's Belts being picked up. And we got Captain Swifties for Billy Boss, so that's what he was saving up for. Uh, Captain. Yep. More, a little bit more initiation. Hopefully now, as I was saying before, the team can get that bit of follow that they that they need and the few extra steps that have to happen for these fights to work today. Give him a little bit extra move speed. If yeah. he ever engages and gets into the back line with one of his ultis, They'll be in a good spot to follow him, mm -hmm. but both of these teams, in terms of shot calling, you can see the stylistic differences. Crumbs, he's very reserved in his shot calling. It's more macro and rotation and vision oriented. Yeah. And then Dignitas, Clearly. they've pretty much had to mm -hmm. reinvent themselves. Again, losing Helios, losing their shot caller, losing a lot of what made them into that team that could come back from deficits. They had a better early game this season. And they once again had that another time. So all three games, they've actually had an advantage in early game. It's just this mid game where the, it starts to get away from them. They don't yep. seem to know how to play out their composition and what they need to be doing. Because denying vision in this comp is so important because you can contest objectives, you can threaten the Baron. Right. And even when you're equal like this, even just a spiderling from Elise coming around the corner and now giving Rylai slow just makes things much easier. So when you're able to deny and control an area, yeah. You can execute on your comp. And a lot of times, but not. a lot of times, the result of that is from this guy on your screen right here, Kiwi Kid, mm -hmm. and the Alistar pick as well. In this same area you were talking about was where that pulverize happened. If he can get a flash pulverize, like we said, Renegades is a very squishy team. They've been able to disengage. That would be a lot of dead 80 carries quite quickly. Still waiting for that one moment. It seems like Dig likes to rely on it, not rely on it a lot, but likes to use it quite a bit because it's something they're forced into. One minute on to Dragon number three of the game. Both have been taken over to Renegades. And I'm sure they're smart enough to not put themselves in a scary situation just for number three. So we'll see how this one works out in 50 seconds. I like this from Kirei, sweeping out Vision. And they already placed the Pink Ward in the Baron Pit. So Dignitas are now denying Vision. And if there's anything that people know about Renegades already, it's that they love their Vision control. Even you can see Alex holds onto his yellow trinket. This is, yeah. I think, the third game. He's done it all three games. Could be wrong, but he's done it at least two of them. Hey man, I he's like holding onto his yellow trinket all game, which means that Sweeper is just even more effective in this matchup. There's more vision for you to sweep off the map. And when you do that, you paralyze Renegades. They don't want to make those uh, kind of risky plays. And I know that's how Crumb's shot calls this. I don't know where you're going with that, but I still like it. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, deny vision, <laughs> Renegades becomes less aggressive because they aren't the team who likes to face check ever. This guy, a collection of wards. That was pretty good. <laughs> everywhere. Wards everywhere. He's happy, that's his power right there. <laughs> they decide to go, farm alarm coming out from Crumbs. He is to the mid lane. 
And they will now start to gather around the Dragon Pit. Like I said, number three may just be one that TP. goes to the wayside. Crumbs in range. There's no smite here right now. There's Kire down to the bottom side. He's hovering underneath Tom Kench's coin, so the smite is there. And it looks like both teams very cautious about back and forth on this. Crumbs in. It's oh, not going to go to Crumbs. Kire is able to steal that one off. Oh. And Crumbs is in a bad spot. He went to tunnel under and got charmed just the last second. You see the creation, but he was not able to get it. Can Dig make moves now that Renegades is a little out of place, but should still have enough to defend. I like how Dignitas is approaching these fights, though, because they're approaching from two members on one side, two or three members on the other. And that's how you should be playing this. You want those skirmishes so that when somebody engages and some and you get the attention of Renegades members, you can pull them off. But Kire. Ooh. All right. But also it's good not to group up against the Victor and the Graves. Don't give them so much uh, kind of value for their abilities. Right. If you get hit by a Victor laser, just make sure your entire team doesn't get hit by it. Only one or two <laughs> people is fine. Start the conga line. So their approach to these fights is good. You can see they're split right now, and Kiwi Kid is actually running the entire way around. And boom, from 800. It's the last number you saw there. And Smite only does 760, so. Simultaneous. That's the coin toss right there. That's where when you're too fast, you're bad. <laughs> yes. That would be the case. Why? Not something I have to deal with, though. It's support, <laughs> you just watch and sit back. Swing. You should keep him away from my spike target. It's always, you gotta say, it's always easier because you have less pressure. You're the one who's gonna steal it and be a hero. As the guy going in, though. That's true. You're like, screw that guy. He's got a ton of pressure on him to hit this. I'm just gonna take it. Yeah, 10k down, flash into the pit. Uh, you know, we're gonna lose anyway. Pepperidge Farm remembers. So does Saint. Four oh. to two, 31 of the clock. Oh, this is what we were looking for. The damage. Wait, wait, can they follow up on it? You're right, the damage. One for one so far. Support for support. That Crumbs. damage dealers are still up. Billy Boss gonna get hit up. Alex each takes him down as they flash over the wall. Now it is going to be a 4v3 as Baron gets started. Key Ray is still alive, a huge factor to start off a 50-50 smite war. And that might be what it comes down to here. It looks like they kind of want to contest this. Kire, no flash. We won't be able to get in there that way. But if they can land a good charm, if they can land some damage and follow up here, it's just going to go nope. over the crumbs. No smite, no repel, no try coming in from Dignitas after they lose a few. And great job by Renegades. Ooh. Snap judgment there to go back in on the fight they got engaged on. Yeah, and it looks like they're going to try to push out this mid wave. But Victor will show up uh, in just a second a here. Yep. And yeah. We were waiting for a fight from either side. That was a lot of tense time, Zyrene. Yeah. Finally happened. It's been neck and neck out the game, and we finally have a bit of a goal difference. Yeah, Remy's always the one engaging, and it works out perfectly again. Brilliant again. Remy gets caught, <laughs> and then the burst comes out on top of that spot. Kiwi Kid goes down. His ult was on. Too. Yes, Good it was. Lord. Jat was talking about how he's seen Alistars get ripped apart while having their ultimate on. And it happens again, and it both takes. Both tanks of the squad of Dignitas were the ones that were ripped through in that fight. That's the damage that they're bringing here. When you have a top laner that does that much on Graves, when you That's have Victor, crazy. you have three big threats. Normally we talk about top laners as, oh, this is a top lane threat. We have you know, a high damage Mundo who's fat or something, or we have even a Fiora, right? But you don't have something that's just gonna build pure damage for the pretty much his entire build and burst people bit of an attempt here by Dignitas to just route Renegades coming down the mid lane. Did not work. Everybody gets out safely on that one. All ultimates are up. Looking at a few flashes down. Kiwi Kid, Billy Boss, not a huge factor. Key Ray can still get into a position. Alex Each might be a target here, as his is now down, and I'm sure that was called by Dignitas yeah. in that previous fight. He has his cleanse, though, mm -hmm. so hitting him with a skill target CC ready for it. is pretty much something you can't rely on. Both Alex and RF have ways to get out of CC, and it kind of delays Dignitas from actually making a move. You have to get the, the cooldown out of those abilities and that item, yep. and then try again, but you can't have them engage on you while you're trying to get those abilities out and put them on you. It's rough. Paying to the bot lane, an assistance called in mid. Billy Boss has TP. It's going to have to come in for, not late, but with knowledge of Renegades now knowing this. So they're going to go hard. Yeah, they're going to go hard for the place where they took the inhibitor turret a long time ago. Uh, he's just back. He'll be all right. 
Nothing crazy. I thought Renegades were going to go harder as soon as they saw him, but they're playing it very safe right now. No need to push themselves outside of the safe zone. Yeah, just clean up. Get some jungle camps on the way out. Yep. And set up for the dragon in another minute. Look for number three here for Renegades. But overall, this game has been pretty steady. It's been about a 2,000 gold lead here for Renegades for a good while now since the Baron came out. It's all about the setup. They're giving each other kind of, it's like, hey, you get one move. And okay, that, that was a nice hit. All right, let's reset again. Yep. It's like fencing. <laughs> they, keep, they keep getting to do it back, back and forth. All right, you get a point. You get a point. My turn. Let's see who gets the next point. It's five to four right now. Taking the lead, but are they? Definitely not map-wise. Uh, Renegades has been able to find a lot of the structures and a lot of the objectives. 20 seconds for the next one here. It's Dragon about to spawn. Yeah, despite Dignitas being down in structures and also being down in gold, you can't really count them out. Oh, wait. Kiwi Kid, he's waiting for his flash pulverize. If he can actually land one on priority members, then you'll be able to blow them up rather quickly if you're actually able to get your damage dealers up just as fast. So Dignitas is looking for that explosive play, but no, no contest here. Yeah, they're playing it safe as well. Over uh, getting blue, Kiray helping out his mid laner. And again, for him, 3 1 and 2 on his Elise game has consistently been getting better for Dignitas. Yeah. It was really a pain point uh, just by what social media was saying. Like, what did this guy do? You know, he tried to pick up Kindred and he did terrible, but now he, it's like it didn't even affect him. And that's really what I like to see is he kind of just went in and still played his own game and the team is very much behind him. Yeah, the Kindred game wasn't that great, four, five, and four, but then his Elise was three, one, and 11. From what I've been hearing, he's really good Elise player and pretty much his best champion. <laughs> it seems so. He's got the 3-1 thing going yeah, he, again. Exactly. He's got 100% kill participation right now. Yep. Needs nine more assists to match his previous score. But he also had the second highest kill participation in that game right behind Shifter. So he's a very active player, but usually active around mid and top side right now. That seems to be his tendency is to help out Shifter, yeah. to help out Smitty J previously, now Billy Boss. He did seem to get a bit flustered once Crumb stole his red. <laughs> But then again, he just went for Alex in mid, so it was flash yeah. down. Why not? If I don't have a red, I'm going to go for the guy who's limping around. Mid game was definitely a bit of a, a back and forth between the junglers. Key Ray and Crumbs got to go at it because we did not get a lane swap throughout this one. And it's played out pretty evenly so far. Renegades feeling comfortable to give up a dragon throughout the game, but have three themselves now as they most recently just got that number three. Plays to be made very soon here. Once we get down to the second tier turrets aid, and once those go down, inhibitors, they follow. Well, you would, you would think, but that top inhibitor's been up all game. Oh, yeah, that's true. The, that's true. But they, they haven't come return to the scene of the crime. <laughs> they haven't done any type of TP split, but Crumbs is going to look for a fight right now. He gets bumped out. Kiwi Kid, not really the target you want. A flash play onto Apollo. Now can Renegades follow up on Remy's hit? You see RF trying to stop the mid turret. And he cannot. That goes down by the hands of Billy Boss. And Dignitas tries to work around the map. They get a turret. They lose a support. Yep. They wanted to have three people top to the four of Renegades and not get engaged on. But Crumbs came from the side and was able to start that fight off. They sent two members mid, both Shifter and uh, I think Billy Boss. And they were able to actually pressure out RF and get that middle tier two. So ultimately, they do end up with a slight bit of an extra gold lead off of that. But at the same time, it's still not enough. You got that structure down for trading Kiwi Kid, but you lose a little bit of pressure. Support's off the, off the map. You don't have this guy who's going to sweep out wards for you. Yeah. You give up Baron control 30 seconds before it's up, and Kiwi Kid's going to be up when there's 20 seconds left. Off. They're going to have to force their way back into that spot, and it might be a little bit blind, too. They do have a ward right on the Baron pit, but you have to watch out for this yeah. area leading up into it. It's Renegades now. Renegades with two upgraded sweepers, and they still have the regular trinkets for double warding. That's going to allow them and Crumbs upgrading to the Ruby Sight Stone as well to continue pushing, that? pushing wards forward. He loves vision. Yeah, it's extra gold. It gives you one more ward for the summoners. We'll talk about that later. Kiwi gets chomped up. And spit out. Spit out, he's good. Good for now, but I don't know if you want to go back in with that. That was the ultimate used, and then he was absorbed. So they do not have a lot of the defense they were just looking at. 
40 minutes coming up on the clock. Renegades now looking to take Baron against Dignitas. How well does Dig fight against the Baron attempts now? Oh. Kiwi Kid goes in, flashes out to make sure they pick up a kill, but no, that's gonna be the kill going in onto Crumbs. D-Ray getting grabbed, another flash being blown to get out of a situation. And now opposite sides of where they really want to be here. See yeah. if Renegades pulls up, heads to the right as they need to protect some turrets. As soon as your smite dies, you stop doing bear. Just, just stop it. Get out of there. Make <laughs> sure that you don't continue to help the other team close out that objective. So crumbs off the field pretty much stops Renegades from doing anything more in that area. There's no way to take a smite from your friend. It's not like lives in a game. Don't you hit start. Take my heal for a smite. <laughs> don't hit start. Let's see how this my goes credits. down. Let's survive. Uh, Billy Boss hits the E pretty early on so that when he's stunned, they're not going to be able to blow him up. But that was really smooth there. Kiwi Kid yeah. gets the pulverize that he needs, and they blow up Crumbs, who has no way to reposition himself. And overall, for Dignitas, that was even a more fantastic of a play because they had just burned, Ki burned Kiwi's ultimate. It was very dangerous for him to go in, but they were still making split second plays. We're able to come out with the, uh, the jungler. Like you said, smite down. Yep. Baron stays up for now. But they are even in For gold. now. Oh, they try to even sneak some members over the wall here, but I think they were spotted out. Yep, there's a, there's the Farsi, the alteration. Farsight, Farsi. Yeah. I'll get it. Words. You see far, Farsight. <laughs> you see far, Farsi. One minute on to Dragon. Number four becomes a huge deal but not so much right now with that Baron having so much pressure on it. Uh, forward wards once again from Renegades. See everything around the blue buff, and that's pretty much all they need to know for that top lane. Does they need the inhibitor or they need that objective? Neck and neck here with Shifter pushing the top lane, trying to get a tier two, try to apply pressure here, but that'll open up the map on the bottom side. Four Renegades, it'll be the fourth dragon for them if they just walk up and take it. They may have to sacrifice the turret for it if they want it that badly, but you may also have to fight in this top lane. Whoa, RF Legendary very close to being engaged on. I think Dignitas knew the whole team was just over the wall though and didn't want to get anything too scary to keep themselves safe. Pretty much coming down to one of these fights, meaning your base, especially with the amount of damage coming up on both teams here. Not as much for Dig as we see through their composition but it is going to be very scary if you lose more than two or three members. What's actually quite interesting is both of these teams actually have a substitute player. Dignitas' top laner yep. and Renegade's AD carry, and they're rather short notice substitutes as well. But both teams are playing almost as if they don't have one. They have, it seems like their their normal roster for most most of this game. Yeah. Right, Billy Boss isn't doing anything that you would be like, oh man, that's, that's the substitute playing right there. They haven't had time to gel just yet. But the thing is, they're not making these plays where we're utilizing these people correctly, right? Billy Boss's split hasn't been that effective. And Lod's poke, we haven't really seen them set up for around these players. It seems like the teams are still playing the way they want to play, and they're trying to plug these people into it. So you still see the same stuff. So yeah, it does look very, very reminiscent of the play we've seen these guys do. Same dynamic, same kind of splits. Looks like Dignitas was maybe trying to pull the teleport out of RF Legendary there, but backed off as the pressure from Renegades would still be pretty harsh. Trying not to test the waters too much. Dragon is alive. May actually is just gonna say see RF Legendary dip down and take that by himself here. Pings are coming down, three pings for directional coming from Dignitas. Let's see if they can put a stop on it. We're all on our way. We are coming. <laughs> but here it is. They don't have too much on Baron in terms of vision either. Baron is completely dark right now. Even the entryway for them is dark. But they have eyes on Renegades in the mid lane, hearing these waves. As soon as you push out the mid, you basically get control of the map because it's a big focal point, and you can go and reinforce Dragon, and you can go towards the Baron as well. So that's All right. a fourth Dragon there for Renegades. This might be a fifth Dragon game. Where do they come from? <laughs> <laughs> Where do they come from? These are the things that hide under your bed. Where, Scary games. Where do they keep all the dragons? I don't know. It's just a different one. The Monty and Doa talked about this. There's like a dragon den underneath. Oh and it's <laughs> like, who wants to go to the party? <laughs> I gotta give him credit for that. It's pretty nice. But yeah, that's probably the best explanation. Oh my god, it's so sad. It's it so is, though. It is very so sad. Good. You think you're going to have fun. 44 on the clock. Looks like Dignitas 
Still hovering towards that top side. Shifter at 401. Still a little below Alex. But right now, these guys are sporting full builds anyway, so it doesn't really matter. They're going to be chugging potions soon here, and those elixirs make themselves that much stronger. These are going to be some final fights we got here. 75.5 to 75.2. Really one of the closest of the long games we've had throughout the season already. Yeah, it's been neck and neck. Both teams are not making any huge plays because Dignitas wants to pick you, but Renegades wants to group up and kite backwards. So it's really nobody's actually going to play into the other team's strategy. Because if you're kiting but backwards, somebody, you're not face checking. Somebody's going to make it happen. Somebody. It's going to happen. League of Legends has to end at some point. So <laughs> something's going to happen. Cyrene, so, I would not test that. <laughs> I would not test that. Right now, though, I'm actually quite curious because you want to push out mid lane if you're Renegades and get Log the oh opportunity to back and pick up his package. Because if you're looking for a fight, you want that package. The pressure comes over. Billy Boss is not able to get a lick there onto Crumbs. I don't know if that would have been their first engage. And Zyrene, frankly, I don't think there's enough time for him to go back and get the package. If he can sneak it, it would be gigantic. Uh. But then the team knows they've gone and got the, he's got oh. the package because of that sound. And that's a nice calling to push off as well as some follow-up damage. Key Ray taking a bit as well. But Lod is hurt. And if Lod can be taken down, that's a lot of damage wiped off from this team. Yeah, sometimes you just get double crit and you have to back up. Unfortunate there, but Apollo, he got in range and he got to chunk RF. RF does have some life steal though with the Mercurial. And they're going to start it up. The crowdie's getting rowdy. They want to see a Baron fight right now. And it looks like it's going to be started. 5,700 HP onto Baron. Got to get in for the smites. Crumbs over the wall. Oh! Hey, there's Kiwi Kid. He goes in very low. And he goes. No, he stays alive. That's Remy and Lod that are both down. Dignitas has pulled the trigger. Spooky Ghosts are out. I don't think they're going to follow here. They want to turn back. They want to go for Baron. They couldn't follow through the gravity field of Alex Ish anyways. And it is on now. Remy was actually not able to use the Crucible. That fight happened so quick and on Dignitas' terms. Crumbs is still alive, Zyrene. The 50-50 smite is alive he's not and anymore. it could still happen. If he could still dump over it, there's the right time. He goes down. He's but not Kiwi's going to have it now. He might headbutt him out. There's so hard to get into this pit. Crumbs goes over the wall. He flat. He what? What was that? Crumbs is going to go down now inside the pit. He tries to make a di last ditch effort play. But it was after expending all the abilities that would have actually saved him if he did get it. Very chaotic, and Dignitas was able to reap the benefits. Yeah, crumbs, tunnels, and then he flashes into the pit. You'd think he would just want to flash, but of course, Kiwi He was Kid, already over there. Kiwi Kid is tracking him, though. Kiwi Kid is going to headbutt him out as the Alistar if he's doing his job You're right. correctly. You're right. So he's trying to kind of mind game him at the same it time. It becomes while difficult. Baron HP. It's so hard. But going back to how that fight even became a thing, is Lod. Shifter's sitting here. He's not actually doing damage. He's waiting for the pick. And Shifter's coming up big this season for Dignitas. Absolutely incredible. Let's see. Digs up straight up the middle onto this one. Crumb's not up yet. This turret could be going down very fast. Billy Boss coming in. Key Ray just on the side to make sure Alex actually can't get in and stop the fight with AoE. Alex now gets charmed after the follow-up comes in. Another hit from Shifter. Billy Boss is going to chop down and eat up Remy. She goes down. Now they're on the inhibitor, and that's all it takes. The flick of a switch for Dignitas to find the right engage. And like we said, it's very, very reminiscent of the same spot it happened before for Dig to keep themselves alive in the LCS. And it looks like they are now going to put the finishing touches here on game four of the day. Week two, day one. The first Nexus turret goes down in 14 to five. Zyrene, this was one heck of an even game all the way through. But with 48 minutes on the clock, Dignitas takes down Renegades. And Shifter making it happen there. Shifter sitting in a bush being very patient. His team is baiting the Baron. I was talking about it so much where you just need to deny vision, force them into a spot where you can execute on the pick composition, and they got it together 47 minutes into the game. It was six to five for so long, and Dignitas picks up eight kills in a quick sequence of events to end the game 14 and five and two and one. Ah. After the first day, week two. Explosive and mind bending. Saying Crumbs and Kiwi Kid and having them not on the same team during calls <laughs> breaks your brain. But what a game coming in from Dignitas there and Renegades as well. Both to come in with a sub and both to really show the same kind of dynamic there. A longer sort of game, hesitance on some of the fights, but overall 
it, you knew, they knew what they were doing because basically nothing was happening. They were getting what they wanted. They were playing very safe. And while that's not the game that everybody wants to watch, that's the game they played. And it almost worked for them. Yeah, they played very safe. It was a different look from the Renegades this week as well. They were the team that always wanted to engage, look for the Morgana binding, look for the Callista ulti into making a play. Yep. This was kite back Renegades, and then the Tom Kench pretty much stops you playing a pick composition. And Dignitas picked up their own, and it came up big in the end. And we see that the Callista again. That's kind of the first, it's, it's for really anybody, a team that's for sure engaged, and they want to get engaged at any time. But having that taken away seems to be a big hit for these guys. Even Lod would have played that, and yeah. it seems to hit Renegades. Enables the team so much. Lod, you know, shrugs his shoulders. He's subbing in. Yeah. They don't have a lot of time with him, but at the end there, he was the one who got picked off. But the team seems supportive of him still. Yep. Rod's very happy with Team Dignitas right now. Having just that one loss now, 2 and one The win over CLG, and now win over Renegades. Very nicely done for them. It kind of